And so we're going to set up a Thor and get a portrait. And one of the biggest things that goes into it is, is the background. Obviously, we want a good subject, we want good light, but also having a background that is at a minimum not distracting um, or, you know, or, or at least pleasing. Um, and then, which brings, brings us immediately to a point, am I taking a picture of a dog and I want most of the frame filled with a dog or am I taking a landscape photo with a dog in it? And that's a decision that most people never think about. Come here, Thor. Thor, come here. <laughs> My willing subject has evacuated. Um, anyway, so we're gonna go over here and set this up. I'm just gonna talk you through it. It's, it's simple um, to me and hopefully you'll think of or be made aware of some things you haven't thought about before. DU Nation is sponsored by Yeti, Winchester Ammo, Drake Waterfowl Systems, Mossy Oak, and Winchester Repeating Arms. We believe in their products, and we appreciate it when you support the companies that support conservation. When you're talking about taking something besides a snapshot, uh, obviously lighting goes into it. In the direction of the light, uh, one of the easiest ways, of course, we love to shoot with the light behind us. Look at your shadow. That's where you want to set your subject up. You can get creative, you can do side lighting and all kinds of other stuff. But for the most part, if you've got a bright sunny day and a blue sky and clean air, you know, it's, it's tough to beat having a front lit where the, where the dog is looking or the subject's looking, you know, towards the sun and you're in between the sun and the subject. So, so right here, uh, those leaves and the trees right there is going to be my background. And we're going to put uh, Thor and John about, oh, you know, uh, two thirds of the way towards them. And, um, uh, I shoot with manual exposure, so you know I'm going to meter off the of blue sky. Did that? Take a test shot of the leaves on the trees. It looks pretty good. So we're going to jump in here and go. We're going to have you right here with Thor. All right, and uh, put him on your left. And what I want you to do is use your yeah exactly. So I don't want him facing me. We're going to set him up so he's quartering a little bit. I want to see that shoulder. And then I'll get him to turn his head with a duck collar or a dummy or something. Can you get some more stuff on you? Those of you that don't know about Goldens, uh, they're kind of the party animals of the retriever breed. So go ahead and bring him in. It's, no, no, you don't get these. No, no bird. No. No, leave it. All right, now turn your body and face where you want his spine. That'll work there, we'll take that. See that front shoulder showing? Now what I've got, I've got John's shadow slightly behind him, I'm gonna get low, that's why I got these knee pads on. So John, you need to just give him a big sit. Tell him sit. Sit, sit. And now take a step to your right. And we'll see if he'll turn on the duck Let's see what we got here. Have you got a bumper? Throw it right over my head. Nice high toss. One thing about this is perspective is everything. And I think one of the big appeals is when you get at the dog's level, you're, you put the viewer in their world as opposed to standing up. And also when you get in front of a dog, most people aren't used to seeing their dog from the duck's point of view. They're used to seeing it from their point of view. So, you know, there's that. And um, uh, in these same shots from a standing or even a kneeling position are gonna be the background changes. Instead of being that, it's, it's closer, it's the grass behind them and the perspective changes. And now you're not really so much in their world uh, as when you get at eye level, so. That's something to consider too when you're when you're taking these pictures, trying to get a great picture of your dog. Get your tongue in there. Just touch his tongue. Thank you. Hey! Yeah, you gomer. That's my dog. Just tell him sit. Walk, just walk that way. Just start walking. Okay, stop right there. Stop right there.
All right, you're gonna throw it. Throw it, throw it at that big pine tree right there. Don't say anything, just throw it. All right. Um, you want to do some action in the water? Yeah. Okay, that's good. So, I mean. So, one of the biggest things that when you're looking at photographing anything, in, and I preach this in the workshops that I put on, control what you can control. If I can control where my subject is, in this case Thor, the direction he's going to run in re relative to the background and to the sun, then I should, then it's the monkeys on my back. And then it's don't blow it. Or, or him, I mean, I can't make a dog run, I can't make him jump. But if I can control everything else, uh, we ought to get something pretty doggone good. So we're gonna walk over this levee here. I'm gonna get on the edge of this water. This is some shallow running lunging water. Um, and uh, ought to be some fun stuff. Uh, again, I'm still shooting a 300 F4, which for this distance is gonna be just right. So. All right, so we're running Thor off of this point right here. I got a good sun angle. I'm just gonna get out here and we're gonna do a few different angle shots and that's and get him uh, coming at different angles to the camera and in relation to the sun. All right, here we go. Hey, hey. Anytime. Beautiful. Call him. Hey. All right. All right, let's do one more, John, right at me. All right, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, we're just getting a variety of angles, left and right. This is a little better angle for the sun that's behind me like this. This way, I'm shooting the shadowed side of the dog. This way, I'm shooting the sun side of the dog. And the near side is always what you want fully lit, if you can. So. All right, one thing to think about is you go out and you take your camera duck hunting or you have somebody that comes with you duck hunting. Um, how can things go wrong equipment wise? Uh, obviously, if it's raining, you need to think about that. You know, that can be an issue. Uh, I use actually buy a, a cover for my for my camera that is a uh, waterproof. You know, it, it covers the lens and everything and I can shoot in rain with it. If it's a downpour, obviously, I'm not going to do that. You know, you're not going to get much quality stuff there. Um, a dry bag, an umbrella, um, somewhere to just, uh, even a towel, throw a towel or a raincoat over the camera. But something a lot of people don't think about is you're out there to photograph the hunt, maybe hunt, photograph the dog. Well, what's the first thing the dog does when he comes back in the blind? He shakes. So, you know, if you're not thinking about it, he's liable to shake all over your camera. So. Uh, be prepared for it. It's not his fault. He's a dog. He's doing what he's supposed to do. He goes and gets a bird, brings it back. And uh, the other thing is, uh, if you're on land, especially, but anywhere, think about the pee zone. You play something, you put your camera bag on the ground, he might get peed on. So, especially if you're at a boat landing, you're unloading a boat, setting your stuff down, uh, and there might be other dogs running around in there. Somebody run up and hose it down. So, little things like that uh, go a long way towards not only having a successful hunt, but some successful memories and not having a, a big expensive repair bill, so. Just to summarize kind of a crash course in, um, in, in how to get better pictures of your dog, first and foremost, think about where the sun is in relation to you and the dog. If possible, get between the sun and the dog. In other words, the dog is fully front lit. That usually is a really good situation. Obviously, advanced people, you can do all kinds of fun stuff, silhouettes and so on. Second thing is think about the, the, the background. What's behind the dog? Look beyond the dog doing something cool. Even when you're duck hunting, especially when you're duck hunting, you know the dog's in a blind or a pit. You know, is there a bunch of, you know, food wrappers or, you know, empty Coke cans, that kind of thing behind the dog or that are going to be distracting? You know, oftentimes it's just simply a matter of pick something up and move it. Uh, or move the dog a little bit. Um, and then uh, 
you know, so that's a, a huge thing. Control what you can control. And um, I, I think it'll, it'll help you make better pictures uh, of your dog and capture those memories that'll last a lifetime.